During a brief period in the early 1970s, a serial killer was driven by unusual delusions, believing that he was being called upon to commit murder to prevent an approaching natural disaster that would devastate California. In 1972, 25-year-old Herbert Mullen, a diagnosed schizophrenic, had been hearing voices in his head telling him an earthquake was coming to California and would level his hometown of Felton. Furthermore, he was the only one who could stop it by killing others. Until that time, Mullen believed the American death toll in the Vietnam War had kept him from needing to carry out the murders, but with the war tapering off in late 1972, in his mind, he would need to start killing to keep the earthquake at bay. Between October 1972 and February 1973, Mullen murdered 13 people and created a sense of intense local panic. By the time he was finally caught and his story became known, this serial killer earned the peculiar legacy as the earthquake killer. Mullen was born on April 18, 1947 in Salinas, California and grew up in nearby Santa Cruz in a strict but nurturing home. Throughout his school years, he had many friends, and by the time he graduated from San Lorenzo Valley High School, he was voted most likely to succeed. But shortly after graduation, tragedy struck. Mullen's best friend, Dean Richardson, was killed in a car accident, leaving Mullen devastated. Mullen struggled to get past the loss of his best friend and built a shrine in his basement dedicated to Richardson. Soon after, Mullen began experimenting with marijuana and LSD, and eventually became a regular user. With the drug use, his family began to see the signs of what would eventually be diagnosed as schizophrenia. Mullen voluntarily entered the hospital for treatment, but left after just six weeks. In the coming years, it would be a repeat pattern of entering institutions and Mullen discharging himself after a short and insufficient period of treatment. In the interim, Mullen would put cigarettes out on his skin, skip group therapy sessions, refuse to take his medication, and would frequently shout at people who were not there. In his book, Whoever Fights Monsters, FBI profiler Robert Ressler said Mullen's paranoid schizophrenia manifested itself in his senior year of high school, and it may have been accelerated by the death of his best friend and the use of LSD. By early 1972, Mullen had returned home to live with his parents in Felton. He was routinely hearing voices warning him that an earthquake was coming and that human sacrifice was the only way to save California. Mullen believed that he was being targeted to carry out the murders because his birthday, April 18th, was the anniversary of the devastating 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which destroyed 80% of the city and killed more than 3,000 people. Mullen's sense of urgency to take action only grew when Reuben Greenspan, a mathematician who had achieved some success in predicting earthquakes, assessed that San Francisco would be struck again by a devastating earthquake along the San Andreas Fault at 9 a.m. on January 4, 1973. As the symptoms of Mullen's schizophrenia became more intense, so did his impulse to take action on what the voices were telling him to do. They wanted him to commit murder to keep the earthquake from destroying San Francisco. In his mind, it was a small price to pay, the death of a few for the safety of the many. Mullen later told the authorities, We human beings through the history of the world have protected our continents from cataclysmic earthquakes by murder. In other words, a minor natural disaster avoids a major natural disaster. Mullen committed his first murder on October 13, 1972, when he picked up a homeless man who was hitchhiking. Mullen killed him with a baseball bat. According to Fuller Torrey's book, The Insanity Offense, Mullen later claimed that the victim was Jonah from the Bible, who had told him telepathically, kill me so that others will be saved. Less than two weeks later, Mullen picked up another hitchhiker, 24-year-old Mary Guilfoyle, a Cabrillo College student. Mullen stabbed her to death as he drove down the street and later abandoned her body in the mountains. Ridden with guilt and anxiety, Mullen went to pray for the dead and confess his sins at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Los Gatos on November 2nd. But unfortunately, he came to believe that the priest, Father Henry Torme, had volunteered to be his next sacrifice. Mullen murdered Father Torme in the confessional. Shortly after, Mullen tried to escape his troubled life by joining the Marines, but was rejected when recruiters learned of his drug use. The rejection inflamed Mullen's decisions, and he became determined to kill his high school friend, Jim Gennaro, for previously selling him marijuana. On January 25, 1973, Mullen killed Genera and his wife by shooting and stabbing them. On the same day, he shot and killed Kathy Francis, a friend of Genera and her two young sons. A few weeks later, Mullen went to Henry Cowell Redwood State Park and found four teenagers who were camping illegally. Acting as a park ranger, he told them to leave, but when they refused, he shot all of them to death. Mullen later claimed the teens had sent him a telepathic message that they were permitting him to kill them. Mullen's final murder came just three days later, on February 13, 1973, when he drove past retired fishmonger Fred Perez, who was at his home during yard work. Mullen made a U-turn, stopped his car, and killed Perez with a shot from his rifle. Mullen casually got back into his car and drove away, but several eyewitnesses had a full description of Mullen and his station wagon, as well as its license plate number. 
all of which led to his capture within minutes and without incident. Mullen was charged with 10 of the 13 murders he committed and pleaded guilty to all of them. It left only one question. Was he sane and therefore culpable for his crimes? Mullen attempted to represent himself in court, but the judge determined that he was not mentally competent for such an undertaking. Mullen repeatedly tried to fire his appointed public defender, but the judge would not allow it. On August 19, 1973, Mullen was determined to be guilty of the first-degree murders of Genera and Francis because they were premeditated. On the other eight murders, he was convicted of second-degree murder because they were considered to be more impulsive. He was sentenced to life in prison and is currently incarcerated at Mule Creek State Prison in Aoni, California. He has attempted to make parole 11 times, most recently in March 2021, and has been denied each time. Although Mullen had confessed to all of his crimes when he was first taken into custody, he maintained it was for the greater good. He insisted that the reason no earthquakes had struck California recently was because of the murders he committed. Just eight days after Mullen was arrested, the strongest earthquake to hit the continental United States in 1973 struck California. Though certainly unrelated to Mullen's killings, it's still a chilling reminder that even the most disturbing motivations can come from a foundation of truth. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.